Yeah, my name's Tim Schuler. I'm with the New Jersey Department of Agriculture. I'm the state apiarist for the state of New Jersey. And today I'm going to show you how to do a alcohol wash of your bees in order to quantify or try to quantify how heavy your mite load is. There are a lot of different ways to, to try to do this. In my experience, um, in years past, people used to use a powdered sugar roll. But that, that powdered sugar roll tends to not give real, real good um, results or I should say sporadic results uh, primarily because if the sugar is not on for a long enough period of time the mites won't release and if it's too humid out when you do the evaluation the mites won't release. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to collect a half a cup of bees put it into this jar of alcohol and shake it hard for about 20 seconds and then we're going to pour that alcohol through this mesh screen into another jar and count the mites that come out. Uh, half a cup of bees is about 300 bees and then we're going to divide that total number of mites by three to get a percentage infestation. Okay what we're going to do now is I'm going to smoke the entrance of the hive. I'm going to find a frame that has open brood on it and that is where we want to take our sample from because open brood is where varroa mites like to hang out because they want to get into a brood cell just before it's capped so that they can reproduce and make more varroa mites, okay? It's a frame of honey, that's not a good frame to pick, take your sample from. It's a frame of nectar that's not a good frame to take your sample from. More honey and nectar. We're going to have to go down to the bottom box because this is nothing but food up here. So this frame has some young larva and eggs on it. Some pupa. So the first thing I want to do is look for the queen to make sure she's not on here because I do not want to take her, obviously. Sometimes if there are a lot of bees on a frame, and it's difficult for you to find the queen, you may want to just shake a few off because there's more bees on that frame than I need. Now the bees have kind of dispersed a little and it's easier for me to spot the queen. So the queen is not here. So now I am going to collect the sample, and it's very easy to do. I'm just going to give a good down shake, like that. This is a quarter cup scoop, so I'm going to take two scoops. I'm going to put the bees right back in, and I'm going to close the hive up. Now some people don't like the fact that this test kills the bees. In fact, we sacrifice 300 bees to hopefully save 30 to 40 to 50,000 bees. So um, I see it as a very good, reliable test if done correctly. And then those bees could also be submitted to the lab and tested for Nosema disease. <clears throat> The main thing I like about this test 
is it gives me a good way to quantify the number of mites in a colony in order to determine if treatment is necessary and to determine if a treatment that was applied actually worked and got the, got the mite level down by any significance. So I reassembled the hive and now we're going to see what kind of uh, level of varroa mites we have in these bees. And I just want to reiterate the fact that sometimes people are upset that 300 bees were killed to do this test. But really, it's a very um, accurate test and much more accurate than the powdered sugar uh, roll method. And, and oftentimes I've seen people that did powdered sugar tell me they had no mites, but when I went to look at their dead hive, they were loaded with varroa mites. And it's because they did not do that test correctly. There's a much smaller room for error in this type of a test than there is in a powdered sugar roll. This test is also much easier to quantify or to give a percent infestation rate in a colony as opposed to mites dropping on a sticky board underneath or powdered sugar roll. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this jar and I'm going to shake these bees pretty hard in order to dislodge any of the mites that might be on their bodies. Okay, now I'm going to switch lids and put my eighth inch mesh lid on. And I'm going to pour the alcohol wash through. And I could even do a little bit of this to really get a good handle on mites that would come out of that wash. And then I'm going to count the mites that are on the bottom of the jar. And I've got four. Four divided by three would be um, 1.3. Uh, percent infestation rate and this is an easy method that somebody could do in their own backyard to try to evaluate what the mite levels were in their hive and put it into a percentage format so that we would be able to compare apples to apples several key things it's important to get 300 bees or about a half a cup it's also very important that the sample is taken from open brood those are two really important parts to do this test correctly. As an alternate to this method, the reason we demonstrated this method was to show how you could just use stuff that's probably in your own kitchen to do this test. Uh, but there's, I can remove a step by using an alcohol washer that's commercially made. And really what this boils down to is two plastic peanut butter type jars where a hole's been cut in the lid of both jars and an eighth inch piece of wire mesh has been put between the two jars. Okay, so what that allows me to do, and I would just demonstrate, I would collect the sample and dump it in the same way you just saw me do it. But what it allows me to do is remove a step that step being transferring from one jar to the next because I will wash this. This is how what I do every day when I go to visit a beekeeper. And then I'll give it a little swirl and I can quickly count the mites that come out in the wash without having to do the, the step of pouring it through a mesh because the mesh is built into my sampling container. Okay, these are commercially available uh, they're produced in Canada, um, and sometimes it may be difficult for you to find them.
I, I don't know that any USB supplier is currently selling them, but I hope in the future some of them do start to sell them because I think it's a very valuable tool. Okay, here is a shot to show you what the mites look like. And actually here they are, they're, they're floating down across the bottom of the container. They are a brick red color, very regular, in, uh, almost oblong in shape. And they differ from a lot of the other debris that is inside of this container. You would count those mites up and divide by three to get your percentage infestation. So yeah, we just did the alcohol wash method um, previously in this video. and we got a 1.3% infestation rate. And one of the things that, uh, you know, a question that would come to mind would be, what do I do with that 1.3%? Um, I would say that depending on where you are, um, contacting the Be Informed Partnership or visiting their website, they have uh, pretty good recommendations as to what levels of varroa mite infestation uh, would dictate what sort of um, actions on the beekeepers part. Uh, for me, if I find a 1.3 percent, I feel pretty comfortable with that. But when that mite level gets up around the 4 and 5 percent, uh, depending on the time of year, I am going to want to do something to reduce it back down again. Um, so I know that doesn't answer your question perfectly, but um, that would give you a good uh, resource so that you can make an informed decision as to how to act when you detect varroa mites in your colonies. I'll tell you right now, if you get much over 5% infestation rate, you better plan on doing another treatment as soon as possible.